Welcome to the Vine Resources Podcast Show with your host, David Lawrence. Welcome to another edition of the Vine Resources Podcast Show. I'm absolutely delighted today to have with me Mike Wardell. Mike is the CEO of Geocom up in Hull in the UK. Mike, thanks for joining me. Pleasure. And uh, Mike, I wonder if we can just do a quick introduction, if that's okay, for our listeners and tell us a bit about who you are and who Geocom is, please. Okay, so so Geocom is a cloud service provider, which probably doesn't mean a lot to, to most people. Um, and I suppose the simplest way to describe it is if, if you look at a small business, they have IT requirements, whether it's laptops, computers, network, software, whatever it is, they'll call in an IT company, an IT guy, um, a technician, whatever you want to call them, um, and, and they're the businesses we support. So effectively, we provide all the software that they need to deploy into those businesses to make them sort of, I suppose, as effective as they can be. Fantastic. And I know you've got over 70 people in, in the organisation. You're all based up in Hull, but you, you service customers right up and down the, the UK. Is that right? That's correct. Yep. Yep. All the way, uh, relatively even spread across the country, so from north to south. Fantastic. Fantastic. And look, and, and there's a lot of investment in Hull as well, or constantly by, by both uh, the government and businesses. So I, I hope it's uh, hope it's a good good place to have the, the location of the business as well. Yeah, I mean, I think I think location is an interesting one because uh, I don't think there's a perfect location for anyone. So if you if, if you pick London as a as a good example, probably a lot more access to talent, but also a lot more competition. If you're up in somewhere like we are in Hull, there's there's obviously less people from this area, but equally less businesses to compete against. But but you're right, there's a lot more investment in Hull, particularly in the tech environment over the last probably the last few years in particular, which is obviously good for us. Fantastic. Mike, what does, so I'm going to jump into the questions now, I'd love to find out now what a typical day in the business looks like for you. I'm probably not alone in saying this, but I don't think there's such thing as a typical day. Um, and I think I've given up on that myth some time ago when I used to try and plan out days and weeks and months. Um, do you know, you, you could be, I could be out with a customer one day, or customers, you know, could be meeting vendors, could be speaking to analysts, could be out with a team, we could be working on a on a, on a project, you know, some marketing campaigns. I, I don't think I've had a day which is the same since I've been here. Um, it, it's just hugely, hugely varied. It, and it just depends on what's, you know, what the priority is, which, as again, most businesses know, seem to change every minute, every day, every every week and so on. Now, I didn't touch on your background, but I know, know you spent a good 15 years and almost within the telecoms industry at, at, at KCOM Group, very successful business. And you've obviously gone on now to, to lead a very successful business now. Who perhaps has been an inspiration to you and, and perhaps been a mentor to you? And what, what how have they helped you in your own journey? It's quite quite a difficult question. That is, uh, you know, you you're right. I was at Carecom for quite a long while, and I was fortunate enough to work with with some great people, and and fortunate enough to get a lot of varied experience. Um, you know, in 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 different functions, um, different business units, just different cultures, which was great. But in terms of influence as a leader, I've probably got a a slightly unusual answer to that. So, so the probably the, the person who's influenced the, the most is probably my my younger brother, um, and not in the way you'd expect. So, so my my brother unfortunately passed away sort of three years ago. He just just had his 30th birthday, um, and I think the the one thing that I kind of learned from that going through that 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 kind of um, that experience was. Obviously, life's too short, so that's an obvious one. But you know, the impact you can have on people. So I've always worked hard, always wanted to do a good job. But actually, you know, I always think, you know, brothers fight. You know, that's what happens. You know, all for our lives, but also get on as well. And actually, if you can kind of probably have spent more of that time having a positive impact, um, that'd have been better for everyone. And and that kind of lens now is 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 how I try and run this business you know we, we've got a, a value which is about making it a great place to work because 
people spend a lot of time at work away from families and away from friends so actually let's make it as best experience that we can for them what do you do from the top within the company now that really keeps your team and your 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 employees and your new employees engaged from the front so engagement and communication is hugely difficult um and i think as we've grown so we've gone from 30 ish to 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 70 ish in the last sort of three years and it it felt relatively straightforward when there was 30 of us um between 50 and 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 onwards it's it's been a lot much more challenging um so one thing we do do is a town hall every month so Mm -hmm. me and my team stand up in front of the full business give some updates on what's going on uh, and that's probably one of the best words and most engaging ways to to, to keep them informed um, we've just launched obviously we're quite close to Microsoft so we've, we've launched teams um, internally and, and we've only just sort of launched a, a sort of GCOM all channel where people can can share with each other key updates and that that seems to be working quite well because it's a lot quicker and it means it's a bit more of a two-way dialogue Every three months as well, I, I sit down in smaller groups for more of a two-way strategy update. This is where we're going as a business. You know, this is this is what we said we're going to do. This is how we're doing. This is what's changing in the environment, and allow that kind of more focused dialogue, which which tends to to work quite well. Um, and you know, I try my best to to have an open door policy so that if anybody wants to chat about anything, then then they can do. Um, and, and we have tried different things as well, like um, I do things like a, a drop in session where I'll say to people, you know, I'll, I'll be free at this time for an hour or an hour and a half or however long. Just if you want to ask any questions or come and talk, then 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 do that. Um, and I think that I suppose the other one, which isn't really a, a more formal sort of communication, we, we do socials every <coughs> month and I make sure I, I'll attend them all. And that's quite, you know, you, you learn a lot more. And I think that's a lot more engaging, you know, to be on the same level as everybody else because everybody is born equal and should be on the same level but when you walk into a business for some reason hierarchy seems to play a big part which it doesn't in the pub or the football pitch or anywhere else um so that that's 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 quite useful as well i mean it there's a uh, there's a lot more that seems to be done these days than when there was maybe five maybe ten years ago what, what why do you think that is um I think there's so, just so much data out there now and it's so easy to get hold of, you know, on your phone, you know, on the internet, all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Um, and, I, you know, be careful not to show my age, but, you know, growing up, you didn't have access to that information. You'd have to get, you'd get it off the paper, off the news, you know, and, and that's be where, where the, what was happening in the world. So in order to be heard, you've got to communicate stuff so many more times through different channels because people are used to hearing stuff in different, in different ways through different mm-hmm. mediums um so i think that you know that that's to me is, is the reason that drives drives that i also think people are, you know and i've talked about it a lot but i think people are a lot more aware of of the kind of different lifestyles people have different cultures um where like bounce and all that all that kind of stuff so therefore uh, you know it just causes us to operate in in different ways mm-hmm. What do you think is the, the biggest challenge facing business leaders right now, in your opinion? Um, do you know, for me, it's the changing workforce. Do you know, um, I think it's the different do you know, people that are entering the workforce now have different expectations, different experience, different knowledge. And it goes back to the point we just said about about access to information. Do you know, people are informed in different ways when they're they're getting their first jobs. Whereas, you know, people brought up in different ways or in the same way from the same areas. But you know, it's much, you know, people travel a lot more for work. People, you know, you know, I'm hardly ever in the office and there's many people who travel more remotely. So the ways of working and and the and the changing, the, the, the changing workforce is going to have the biggest challenge to how do you how do you cater for all those different requirements under, under one roof or multiple roofs, however you want to put it. What's the best piece of business advice you've you've ever been given? So there's a few things. So I, one thing that I was sort of told recently was um, do only what you can do. And the premise around that was 
you know, you're the CEO of this business. Right? There's certain stuff that only you can do. You can't send a sales guy, marketing, your, your CMO, whoever it is, to do that job because it is expected that is the CEO job. Right? So you need to make sure you're doing what only you can do. And therefore, you need to get the right people in your team to do the jobs that they should do. Um, because it's very easy, particularly when the business has grown and changed so much and you know the business inside out to duck into the detail and kind of meddle in things that you really shouldn't be. And then and you're not doing the best for the people in the business or, or for the business itself. So that's probably one. I would I'll just throw in a couple of quick ones, but and, and these probably aren't new, but one's about hiring people better than you. Um and 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 the the other one's about sometimes a bad decision's better than no decision because you can get on and rectify it very good yeah very true what's what's exciting you in the industry right now um so in, uh, do you know what? I, I love technology right i'm probably a bit of a geek um and because it can have such a, a, a material impact and hopefully a positive impact on people's lives and the business as well and, and where where we are do you know I, I think we're very fortunate that we we not only can kind of look at the software look at applications that that can help a small business but because we we sell through kind of it companies and resellers, we can also help them do you know and educate them and help them deploy stuff in in, in into those organizations and i think when you look at what technology does now remote working used to be talked at loosely now it's it's a reality people can work from anywhere you look at your, your you know mobile phone you can work off your mobile phone now from the applications you know it's a long a long way from the sort of nokia 3210 with snake and all that kind of stuff so i think the fact that it's, it's a great game yeah i'm not sure they've, they've found a better one um but so I think I think the, the the sort of opportunity that technology creates um, is, is 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 exciting. Do you know, I think it's great. What what's the way that you are helping your your team and your employees with their well being in in the in your office or in your company, I should say. So we we moved office um, into where we are now a couple of years ago, and I remember I, we had less people, so I used to go around buying sweets now and again on a Friday and leave them on people's desk, and mm. um, we started to get a bit bigger and then I started feeling a bit guilty I thought that doesn't feel like it's promoting well-being leaving sweets around felt like a nice thing to do so I thought we'll counterbalance that with fruit so we do fruit as much fruit as you can eat we'll, we'll get you know we get it delivered fresh fruit so sort of, um, a few times a week so that's kind of sort of one what one one kind of sad side of thing the other thing we've kind of started to, to, to think about is actually people aren't as well educated on life skills let's say so we've we do things like finance workshop as in managing your own finances personally Mm. for our staff you know pension workshops we've got we've got um sort of um, benefits around gym gym memberships for staff We've, we do yoga. I, I don't. Nobody wants to say that. Um, but we do yoga kind of once a week. We've just given flu jabs to the to the, to the staff, um, and we've got a, an area upstairs um, which is just for sort of social, so pool table. I know it sounds very techy, but you know, darts, games, and all that kind of stuff. And that's more of a sort of from a mental point of view to give you, you know, if somebody's a bit stressed or need to change the environment or want to sponsor break they've got somewhere to go rather than go and sit in the car park on their own or whatever people used to do um so we, yeah it's something that's that, you know we we try to expand on and a lot of time we need to be led by our team so what is it you want how, how can we help you so the finance workshop I, it wouldn't have entered my head but one of the team sort of asked about it, just sent me an email saying it'd be great if you know, a lot, I've heard a lot of the team mention they don't know quite how to budget or manage their own finances and I think everybody's too embarrassed to ask so could we do something <clears throat> so, so we worked with I think Yorkshire Bank I think it was who came in to, to help help with that that's so. a great idea that's a great idea is there is there killer pool on a Friday and darts uh, for, for a bit of money or is that is that uh, is that illegal these days um I, I'm not sure <laughs> it's illegal it's, it, the may well be I don't know I mean it's, it, it, it it depends the pool table definitely gets gets well used the dart boards just had to get a new reframe around it because the wall <laughs> appeared to have loads of holes in it um so I'm not sure quite what what it's used for. I'm, I'm probably better off not knowing as well. You might need a you might need the trainer next for the for the darts team. Um, <laughs> can you share 
perhaps a, a, a something from your childhood that may have influenced your your work ethic in later life? Okay, so I think I said before, but I you know, brought up in Hull. Um, it's probably no surprise Hull's not the most affluent um, area. I'm proud to be from Hull, um, as I think most people from the area are. Um, and uh, you know, if you if you come kind of from this area, and you you you. you you know, you you kind of brought up in a way that you you've got to work hard to, to get anywhere. Um, and if I look at uh, sort of my parents, I suppose my dad was always um, working. You know, till the early as I was in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, I found out later it's because he was messing around at work and not really working very hard, and he had to catch up. But at the time, it looked like you had to work loads of hours to to kind of get stuff done. Um, so there was that side. But plus, my mum was a um, used to work in a pub when we were growing up. So, you know, on Christmas, we'd have to go and meet her and stuff like that. Um, but she went and sort of went and did a bookkeeping course, accounting GCSE. She did shorthand and all kinds of stuff to kind of, you know, educate herself. Um, and that kind of self start to work hard was probably ingrained um, in, in us growing up. What do you think your industry is going to look like now in if you move forward five years time and how might that impact your business model do you think um so i think for us where we are uh, uh, um in you know in the industry is that there's there already is multiple applications you know god knows what the the number is millions of applications out there um and there's more created every day every hour every minute you know, um so that's going to continue and therefore, it's going to create a lot more confusion in terms of which is the best application service, software, you know, whatever you want to call it for a business um, to use. Therefore, from our perspective, we, we need to work hard on being able to, to cut through all of that and help our customers choose between a, a short selection of, of the, the sort of world class application or vendors. And I think the, the second bit where technology is changing is you know in it you would just deploy software here it is here's your laptop Mm -hmm. it's got an email and it's got all this kind of stuff on it off you go see you later whereas now i think there's a real world to kind of educate people how to get the best out of the software not necessarily get more software but how do you use it how does it all integrate into each other Um, and i think the role of our customers is going to be a lot more consultative and helpful rather than just technology led I think you're so right there. And even just talking to customers of mine in the last few weeks, I can see people who are not even getting the maximum value out of, let's say, the Office 365 or, or Microsoft Teams. And there's some clever little things that are in there as well. So that's, that's great to hear. Look, what if you were giving your 20-year-old self advice, and I know you're a young man, so it wasn't that long ago. Uh, but if you were giving your 20-year-old self advice, one piece of advice, what would you what would you look back and say to yourself now? So I think what one thing... Um, do you know, I've always done is, is try to do the, the best job and, and, and work hard for that. And I think the problem, there's nothing wrong with that approach at all. But what that means is you tend to put yourself second um, and, and your own development. And if I think back over the first 10 plus years, it, it was all about getting the task or the job done, whatever it is, getting it done and, and not necessarily thinking about what I wanted to do or or what development I need to be better at, whatever it was I was doing or wanted to do. And you think about things like networking, I'd never do networking because it wasn't achieving that task. Whereas now, I think, you know, the networking side of things and learning from other people is is hugely valuable. And I think if I went back and I'd said, look, you need to have a bit more of a balance around time and actually meet people, you know, learn from their experience rather than the ones that, only the ones you've you've got yourself. Mike, thanks. Thanks for sharing your answers today. I can see it's really from the heart, which is really nice to see. Uh, and I think that must be a whole thing, by the way, because they're very passionate people up there. Um, Mike, what's the best way? If people want to find out more about Geocom, they want to reach out or connect with you or find out more about the company. What's the best way they can do that? Um, so I suppose if, if, if anybody wants to connect with me directly, then then clearly just, just find me on LinkedIn. Hopefully relatively straightforward. Um, if if um, it's more of a business or, or looking at sort of recruitment, then if, if you log onto the website, say cloudmarket.com, um, there'll be plenty of information there. Nice and easy. Mike, thanks so much for joining me and have a nice end to your year. Take care. Yeah, thank you. 
Thank you so much for listening to our podcast today. We really hope you enjoyed it. We'd be grateful if you could rate our podcast on iTunes. Five stars would be really amazing. Thank you.